Hello and welcome to Resource Review. Today we'll be evaluating three resources for primary citizenship. They are a range of large cloth dolls. Hello Mika, my name is Mr Bill and I really, really like going to the park. A mobile education centre. We are going to think about something that you've all brought with you and those are our feelings and a primary school council toolkit. To find out what our panel of experts think, keep watching Resource Review. Recommending today's resources is Mandy Davies, Primary PSHE Advisor to Staffordshire Education Service. And joining Mandy, we have Adrienne Jones, a freelance educational consultant, and Colin Hinson, an educational writer. Well, thank you all very much for coming. Mandy, your first choice of resource are these yes. three dolls joining us today. Um, tell yes. us more about them as a resource. Okay. Um, these are three of the 13 persona dolls, different persona dolls that there are. And I particularly like them because they provide a, a non-threatening way for young children to explore their feelings and, and different situations. Why did you choose them? I mean, what do you like about them? Well, I, I, I really do like the way that children will relate to these dolls. They're, they're not that much smaller smaller than the children, particularly the younger ones. OK, great. Yes. Well, before we talk about this resource any further, let's have a look at it in action. Our dolls paid a visit to Victoria Community School in Staffordshire, where teacher Claire Deville introduced them to her Year 2 class. Today, we're going to be learning a bit about life in South Africa. We were using a persona doll as a sort of a means to introduce work on citizenship. There's a range of dolls and they're based on different cultural characteristics. In this context it was just as a prompt to introduce more ideas about Africa. Right then, so Mika's going to come round and you're going to tell your name in a big, big voice and you're going to tell her something that you like. And then Mika is going to tell you about her life in Africa. Right then. Hello Mika, my name is Mr Bill and I really, really like um, going to the park. We used the doll today as an, an introduction to the main teaching activity which was to learn about Africa through the use of artefacts and the use of food. Sharib, you're not touching, would you like to go and feel something that's under there? What have you got? You think it might be a brush? We didn't What's basically it use it as the main focus of the activity because we felt that the artefacts and the food were, were more what we wanted to, the children to get across. But, but in, a, in a forthcoming session, we'll find out more about home life and so we'll use it as a stimulus. Have a think about something that you found out today about things that happen in Africa. And I want you to tell Mika when we pass around the circle. I think that the, the idea of the doll is excellent because you can really, really get something that's appropriate for the topic or theme that you're concentrating on. The disadvantages of the doll are perhaps the children find their face slightly um, unusual. They're not quite as realistic as they possibly could be. Can you like to taste the banana? Goodness me. Right, children. Persona dolls are a really, really good way of introducing citizenship into schools, but they are very expensive. Well, Mandy, the dolls did seem popular with the pupils. There's a wide range of dolls available, sort of representing mm -hmm. all parts of the globe. How important That's is right. it that primary pupils get this sense of being a global citizen? It's really important for them. The children themselves are coming from a very, very wide range of, of backgrounds themselves and, and it's really good for them to be able to explore that further. Okay. okay. Thank you. Well, Adrienne, what did you think of our little friends? Well, my friend here wants to tell a story about how whenever it's time to clear up after we've been doing messy activities, he always goes to a corner and doesn't join in. <laughs> and the relevance there to global citizenship. And the relevance there to global <laughs> citizenship is actually more in the realm of PSHE, where a doll would tell its own story. 
and it would be used for children to consider what it's like to be bullied or to make decisions about things, how you talk about your feelings. So it can be used, or they can be used for personal reasons to actually get children talking. Colin, what do you think? Well, I've been looking forward to doing this <laughs> ever since I saw him because there's a lovely character here. Um, I think that uh, these, these dolls are great because one of the things that uh, young children particularly have difficulty is when talking about their thoughts and feelings and emotions is is doing it without any any props or, or, or con something to look at and to, to sort of relate to and so something like these dolls which are very sort of familiar because you know they're, they're children really really helps children to to express feelings and emotions and then from a PHSE point of view I think that's fantastic Okay, okay, well, thank you all very much. Now let's move on to Mandy's second choice of resource. And this is something very different. It's a visit from a mobile education centre. Mandy, can you explain this resource to us? Um, the Life Education Centre is a mobile classroom which actually visits the children in their own schools and it covers a, a range of, of topics so from um, reception, nursery reception right through to the end of, of Key Stage 2. It looks at feelings, um, healthy eating and then links into the citizenship agenda as well. Is this something that mm -hmm. you would bring into school for half a day or, or for one right. lesson or how would it work? Um, depending on the size of the school the caravan may visit um, for half a day, uh, one day usually or, or maybe up to a week. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Well when one of these mobile classrooms visited St Edward's School in London we tagged along to see how teacher Hannah Lister and her class got on with it. Today, um, my class went to see the Life Education Bus. So they were so excited beforehand and all really excited. And then as soon as they got in, they just all became very quiet. Because it's quite a small space and it's quite dark. OK, well, well done for coming in so nicely. And welcome to the Life Bus. My name's Sarah. Good morning. Life Education Centres is a charity that's set up to help children make healthy choices. We are going to think about something that you've all brought with you and those are our feelings okay now you are feeling really excited different areas in the country will have a mobile classroom maybe two maybe even three and they'll visit a school on an annual basis and the children will come in and do different programs they'd like to come up and find tam's lungs we have different resources that we use in the classroom we've got tam um, which is our model that lights up we have stars that come out um, with the younger children to emphasise the importance of sleep for when they're growing. So can you reach a hand up to the stars? Um, we use the television DVD a lot to show dramas and we watch them unfold bit by bit and discuss them as they go along. And we also have Harold, our hand puppet, who's the national mascot of the charity. And he, he comes out to introduce difficult subjects to younger children. Harold says that just before he came out to say hello, he was about to take some of Jocko's cough medicine. Do you think it's a good idea for Harold to take some of Jocko's cough medicine? So really it's, it's to do with feelings and um, looking after our own personal needs and emotional intelligence. One, two, three. <laughs> The main message be, if you've got a problem, tell a grown-up that you trust about it and they can help you sort it out. Do you think there's anything that Harold could drink that would make I think the mobile classroom is really well designed. Uh, the only thing is, it's just quite small. I think that just by being in a different environment, it just makes it so memorable. So when they do come up with a situation in the playground that they are uncomfortable with, they hopefully will then think back to that role play and be able to use that. So it's brilliant. Well, Mandy, I love the look of the Life Education Centre, but I mean, I understand the prices vary, but mm -hmm. if you were to bring it into school for a week, it could yeah. cost over a thousand pounds. So yes. that's a big investment. It is a big investment, but the teachers um, who use the Life Education Centre do find that that investment is really worth it. And there are lots of ways of, uh, of helping with the funding. In some areas, the, um, the drug action team or different charities will help, will help to fund the programme so that it, it the school doesn't have to bear the cost right. fully. Colin, what did you think of this <laughs> well, result? It was, it was lovely. I mean, I had a little worry when I was sort of reading about it and, and, and finding out about it. I had a little worry about 
isn't this something that can just be done in the classroom anyway? Why bring along the Life Education Centre into the school? But, but on the video, catching the excitement of the children and then the teacher saying, you know, clearly that they will remember this, you know, because of the experience of going into this caravan and talking to the, uh, the facilitator there was, it's an experience that, that they'll always remember and the message that is being put across will stick as well. Okay. Adrian, what did you think? I think the good thing about it is the fact that um, it travels geographically around the country and meets lots of children and adapts the content of the sessions that are given about how to be healthy. Um, and it gives a consistency of approach, which you know, schools are trying to do. Um, there's a lot on teachers' timetables where they have to teach about drugs education and health education. And, and the whole PSHE and citizenship thing, which mm -hmm. this scheme actually does. Yes, our teachers given ideas on how to follow up a, a visit. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the booklets that accompany each visit um, are very, very thorough, and it covers a, a range of, of topics, so from um, reception, nursery reception, right through to the end of, of Key Stage 2. Well, thank you. Now let's move on to the third resource, which is from the School Councils UK and it's the Primary School Council's Toolkit. Mandy, explain this resource to us. Right. Um, I find this resource is, is really useful for schools when they're, they're trying to establish an effective school council. What are the two aspects of the resource that we've got here? Right. This is the, the basic primary um, toolkit, so that if a school wanted to set up a school council, it actually goes through the process that the children need to work through. It talks um, through and takes people through the, the staff training and um, gives the language that's needed and really gives a very clear framework for setting up an effective council. Okay, and this one focuses on Key Stage 1? Yes, this is a new resource that um, actually um, looks at participation, making sure that every child has an active part to play in school council. Okay. What do our panel think? Colin, is this going to help school councils? Well, I think so, and, and certainly the, I was very impressed by the fact that there's a teacher's pack in there with, with training materials for teachers and so on, because I suspect that when school councils are set up, there's not much material that's actually available for teachers themselves. Adrian, Well, there's some also some little books for pupils, which um, are very colourful. You know, very attractive, We've got stickers in the back there, well illustrated and give a sense of ownership. I mean, I would imagine these would be given individually. That's right, to yes, schools can, can buy those and, and actually give those to, to the pupils independently. But I must say there's an awful lot of reading for teachers in the teachers' pack. Yes, I, I think what's, what's really good about the pack is that it encourages schools to hold um, training sessions and, um, and so a lot of the materials will be explored in that way rather than just reading through. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. But to summarise, the three resources that we looked at were the Persona range of dolls from Persona Dolls Training UK, Life Education Centres from the Life Education Centres Charity, and finally, the Primary School Council's Toolkit, published by the School Councils UK. For more information about all of the resources featured on today's programme and to post your own comments about other resources for primary citizenship, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. If you want to, email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. So a very big thank you to our panel, to Mandy, to Adrienne and to Colin. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye bye.